Hello, Chloe. This is strange that we're being recorded while we chat. I know, and but God only knows what we might say to each other accidentally. we don't forget that we're being recorded. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I might jump straight into the questions, and then after we finish the questions, we can just do our, our usual chat. Okay. So when you first started writing The Drake Sisters, did you already have all of these spin-offs planned, like the Sea Havens and the Torpedo Inc., or did they develop later? No, I knew that I would write them. I knew from the very beginning that I was going to write them. I totally envy that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my Sharon MC was meant to be a trilogy and I've just finished writing book 12. Um, <laughs> what made you pick Russian as the country of birth for all of the Twitter Inc. boys and girls? You know, I um, wanted to do something that was um, sort of badass. And I had read this whole thing on these schools uh, for assassins a long time ago. And I um, was very struck by them and the training. And I thought, okay, this is, this will work. This, this is going to work for my, you know, d doing a motorcycle. And of course it was far off. I knew that I was going to do it a long way off and I was preparing for it from the Drake sisters and then the sisters of the heart. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was the perfect way to kind of ease into that motorcycle club. And, um, I pedophiles, when you deal with male um, men who are molested, they don't get the sympathy that, um, females get as a rule. And a lot of times, um, you have to handle it a lot differently. So, um, I picked something that was considered first, they're assassins. They're in a motorcycle club. They are considered, um, really scary and badass. So, um, you know, it was like a no brainer for me yeah. uh, to, to do that. So, so those schools were real? Uh, if you if you kind of check out things, um, yeah, you can find that. Well, not my schools, <laughs> well, yeah. of course. Hopefully but, not. <laughs> yes, but yes, they did have um, training like that. Wow, crazy. Okay, so for um, each member of your Torpedo Inc. series has been through some trauma, which we've just touched on. And some very challenging circumstances. When you began the series, did you have a clear picture in your mind for each of the characters or do they kind of reveal what their trauma is as you write them? Um, actually, they reveal it as I write it. And um, that has been a real problem for me <laughs> because when I first started it, honestly, it was the therapists who said to me, you know, you're going to have to deal with a lot of se sexual issues. And I went, uh Oh, <laughs> because I really wasn't thinking in terms of writing something that had a lot of sexual issues. Um, so that backfired. <laughs> yes, it did. Oh my God. And you know, I get to uh, really do a lot of research in a lot of areas that I am not, that familiar with I have become very familiar with it because when I research I research very thoroughly and I lot I like to have primary sources and I also like to um you know I, I'm very thorough let me just say that um we're both crazy about our research <laughs> yes 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 and so um it's it's been quite the um interesting <laughs> interesting yeah. ride with these motorcycle members so yeah. you gotta love when characters take you places that you didn't really want to go <laughs> mm -hmm. or even thought I mean I never even dreamed that yeah. I would go in that direction but um I have such um empathy for them and I want them to have happy lives and and then when I read about um people who have had these things happen to them it breaks my heart. And then I'm like, I want them to have happy endings. I, I mm -hmm. want to create hope for people. And I do it through fiction, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope that some people just read the books and they're entertained and other people read the books 
And I know that they do find um, hope because I get the letters. And so then that makes me feel like at least I've helped somebody, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like all of the Torpedo Inc. men and women are like, yeah, they're, like, like you said, they're assassins. They're absolute badass, hard asses. But the way that they're broken, you just kind of want to gather them all in and give them big hugs. It's like, I'll just pull the pieces back together. <laughs> And it's kind of funny the way they think certain things that you and I would be like, that's nothing. They think it's terrible, but yeah. killing somebody, oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like a different <laughs> realm yeah. of, of priority. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I just went, you mentioned several hobbies in the books and some rather unusual ones, uh, like lead lighting, the jewelry making, the kaleidoscope making. Um, and along with things kind of more standard, like Anya's sketching and Soleil's painting, do you do any of these hobbies? And if you do, did you write about it because you already knew how to do it? Or did you start doing it after you researched them? Um, I, some of it I uh, learned after. Like I was very interested in making kaleidoscopes. I have a lot of kaleidoscopes. And in fact, at one of my um, conventions, I brought in a, a really um, famous kaleidoscope maker and she uh, gave a class on it and, and several people were able to make kaleidoscopes. Wow. Um, yeah, it was really fun. And um, I, uh, one year, gave away uh, kaleidoscopes. As I've played with that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, just because they're they're so cool because you can just sort of turn the dial and see something different every time, you know. And there's a I have a dry what's called a dry kaleidoscope, and so if you have visitors, um, you know, they can leave a little something like uh, an earring or you know, you can collect things from different places you've gone and put it in that little um, cell and mm. make your own um, cell. And there, there's so much you can do with kaleidoscopes and you don't realize it, but someone who, well, I, I had it in one of my books, someone who's autistic uh, can, it can change the way their mood is or the way they're feeling just by looking into it. You know, one of my granddaughters, uh, I had one for her and she really, you know, that was her go-to thing. She loved it. Mm -hmm. You know, she would look into it and spend time with it. Now I will say um, we have painting parties. Mm -hmm. I am the worst. And my <laughs> little uh, granddaughter who is seven, who is very, very good. She paints like she's 30. She tries so hard not to laugh at me. And she'll be like, uh, Nana, what is that you're painting? And I'll look at her and give her the evil eye. And she'll try not to guess because inevitably she's guessing wrong. <laughs> and it really looks bad. Because I, I really can't draw. And I've always wanted to. I admire people who can paint but I'm not one of them. <laughs> the the kaleidoscope thing really got me, especially after Joe Carroll let me have a play with the, the one that she won at the event um, with the different cells. Cause I mean, to me, kaleidoscopes were always just like those cheap crappy things you get when you're a kid. And then like to see the one that you, that one that you made, it was like, there was just this, it was so awesome. It kind of blew kind of blew my mind a little bit that it was a thing and yeah, reading the book and, I can't remember which one of the Drake sisters does it. Which one of the, I can't remember. Uh, Judith. Judith. Um, yeah. It's been a little while since I've read those books. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like the way that she yeah puts each personality into the cells and I can't, I can't having to go one day. Um, yeah. Okay. So I love the way that you write. I mean, not only Torpedo Inc, all of the series that I've read of yours, you do this, but we're focusing on Torpedo Inc. So we'll do that. But you, you write the crew as a big family. And, you know, they argue and bicker and, like, the boys hide Elena's food so that they get it all. Um, like, it's just real sibling stuff that they do. And I know that you come from a big family yourself. Yeah. So I'm wondering, are any of these little things that happen in the books, things that you and your siblings or your kids did? 
I think so. I think that you can't help but sometimes draw from some of those things. You know, I know that in uh, there was a scene. Well, there's been a few scenes like, for instance, uh, the red pan, the red panty ceremony. I'm so embarrassed to even say this. The red <laughs> panty ceremony in uh, the Drake sisters. Um, that uh, was something that we actually did. <laughs> <laughs> we made that up and we actually did do that uh, on more than one occasion for um, friends and family. <laughs> so yes, that was done. And then in the, the Carpathian series where uh, in Dark Celebration, where there was uh, exploding kitchen things and the football roast and whatever that was done and I will admit that I was part of the very bad roast <laughs> cooking um so yeah there were there are certain things that yes we have drawn on that are funny you yeah. know oh okay I will admit and I will never ever divulge which sister but um or daughter uh, the one where she, there was a part where the she went to litter and she didn't you know she threw ice out of the car and everybody laughed because she was going to be a bad girl and they all laughed at her she said, no I'm littering and they're like throwing ice out of a car is not littering we thought you were going to throw this yeah. and she's then they gave you know two hour lecture on what it would be like well that actually happened one of my daughters that was like yeah she was about seven i think i know <laughs> <laughs> never divulge which no, child that i was. can take an educated guess <laughs> uh, <laughs> um so Anya is a bar bartender and she has the moves. So wondering what your favorite drink is and have you ever actually seen a bartender able to do the flippy cocktail? The flare? Yes, I have seen bartenders do that. I actually don't go to bars very often. I am, um, I, I am not somebody who does attend, you know, go to bars very often, but um <clears throat> What is the name of my favorite drink? Um, it's one with a lot of mint. You can tell I don't drink much. Um, That's the only one I know. That's no, 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 no. <laughs> what is it? Mojito. That's it. I Mojito. <laughs> That's what I drink. And I always say light on the alcohol. I also yeah. will drink a champagne. It's champagne, a peach, um, B B Bellini. Okay. I will drink that occasionally. Very rare. It's very rare for me to drink any alcohol. Yeah. Um, it's probably maybe twice a year. Yeah. I I'm am the same. not somebody who drinks alcohol. Yeah. I, I don't drink much either. Mm -hmm. and I remember it was funny the first time I went to New Orleans, my publisher decided that there was a group of us, there was three of us Australians there, and it was all of our first time in the US and to New Orleans, obviously. And she's like, you can't come to New Orleans without having a hurricane. So she bought us all a hurricane. I didn't realize that you've got to kind of mix those things up because like the alcohol sinks. So like I had a straw. So my first mouthful was basically just wrong. Oh. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, that was a very professional image of me coughing my lungs up in front of my publisher. <laughs> I, you know, I think um, I was in New Orleans the first time I had a mojito and I, but I was smart and said light on the alcohol and that was it. You know, I, I just, I'm, I've never, uh, drank a lot, you know, I just never did. And so I never got into the habit. I think I was probably in my forties before I took my first alcoholic drink wow. other than, um, you know, um, when I was a kid, we would at Christmas have, um, a little tiny, um, you know, something yeah. with my family. Everybody would have something uh, together. Yeah. Uh, 
and that was it you know I think I don't drink now because I drank a lot when I was younger um because I grew up way out in the country and there's not a whole lot to do as a teenager in the country Mm -hmm. (laughs) so I had my first drink at 13 and probably between 15 and 17 I, I drank quite a bit and then by the time I hit 18 which it's legal to drink here when you're 18 by the time it was legal I was kind of over it like, well, I'm allowed to do it now. What's the point? So <laughs> I don't really drink much now. Cause it's like, oh. I think it was working so much that I just, you know. I, you didn't have time. Yeah. Yeah. I but it's expensive. It's like there's better things to spend the money on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, so what's th- we were talking about research earlier, and you know how much I love my research. So, what's the favorite research you've done? You know, um, I think if if I have the series, I love researching. Honestly, is the Ghost Walkers? Love that Be- because <laughs> you know I have to research so much science, and not just. It, it's all their locations, which are super cool. Yeah. And then you don't think about all the small things, like all the animals and all the um, trees. And, and then um, if I'm putting in something that she, the women are cooking. Mm-hmm. But then all the science part, like right now, I'm doing things with, with lightning. And... Um, and weapons that you can make with lightning. But mm-hmm. today, and then today I was FaceTiming my 14 year old granddaughter. And I said, um, you know, it's so cool because I'm learning all about fall lightning. Have you ever even heard of it? And she loves science. And she said, isn't that the kind that like goes into the house? Like, and I said, yeah. How did you even hear of that? Cause I didn't even know about it really. I mean, I vaguely, mm. and she's like, Nana, I'm going to get out my, she has this giant science book and she's like, I'm going to look it up right now. And I said, they're, they're making weapons with it. And she's like, are you kidding me? That's so cool. And I go, yeah, not really. <laughs> and, you know, so then we're like talking about it and how, you know, they're trying to divert lightning away from crops and, you know, all the different things that you can do, but then all the bad things you can do if you can actually, you, you know, do things with it. Yeah. So anyway, mm-hmm. I love all the cool things that you can that you can research uh with the ghost walkers speaking of the ghost walkers because you know that's my favorite like i mean the torpedo wings it's close but the ghost walkers are my favorite Uh, is it true that you researched something a little too much at some point and you had an officer or agent come to visit you about it (laughs) (laughs) okay (laughs) <laughs> oh my god I do get in trouble sometimes I he didn't come to my house okay <laughs> I'm so embarrassed okay I was I have a friend who's like super like he used to actually be a think tank or like he was one of those government think like he thought up stuff for the government all the time he doesn't do that anymore but I, I hit him up for ideas all the time. Like we talk about stuff all the time. And I wanted a certain weapon for submarines. And so I'm like, okay, well, I really, you know, what do you think? Let's, you know. And it just so happened that I have a nephew who is high up in the Navy. Mm -hmm. So I'm corresponding with him and saying, what do you think about this? And we're, we're just emailing and it's on the Navy server, (laughs) (laughs) you know, because it's like innocent. Yeah. (laughs) If I don't know that. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so, what about this? And we're going back and forth back. And then all of a sudden he's like, you know, this sounds real. 
Mm-hmm. And <laughs> anyway, he goes, maybe we shouldn't talk about this anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Me. <laughs> and then a few, uh, I would say maybe a week later, I get a little letter from NCIS. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my God, they're going to arrest me. But they were very nice. And they just asked for all my books for their ships. <laughs> Which I was quite happy to give them. That is awesome. And much better than the rumor that's floating around. I like that version better. <laughs> yes. No, they did not come and arrest me. And then, uh, then I decided, because at one point I needed the exact location of the... Um, rebel camps in the Congo, Mm -hmm. which I did end up figuring out, by the way. Wow. But I decided that it was better to make one of my, my researchers that use their computers and get them flagged instead of me. My little granddaughter's trying to, you might have to tell her to stop. (laughs) <laughs> she's like, if I ring enough, she'll answer. <laughs> she will keep it up. She's very, um, she's very persistent at times, but we'll tell her to stop. <laughs> my daughter's little friend does that. She rings. So my do- my daughter catches the school bus home. So it takes her, you know, half an hour to get home. And her little friend lives near the near the school. And she keeps sending me a message at like three thirty, saying, "Can I talk to?" You? to you know my daughter and it's like she's not home yet you know how she wasn't home yesterday well she's not home today the bus does the same thing (laughs) but they're super cute and it's it's quite adorable so okay next question um do you think in real life for you could you live as an old lady to a biker or do you think you'd need to be like Alana and Lena and be part of the club yourself and get a full vote and know what's going on I am a bossy, smart ass. I am, I look like a sweet person, but I am not. <laughs> no. I, you know, I, I raised too many kids and I've been around the block too many times. <laughs> I, I, I just don't see myself being, I'm not that that nice. Let me just say, (laughs) I'd probably slit one of their throats in the middle of the night. (laughs) Yeah, I I think we're on the same page with that one. Like when I wrote the question, I'm like, I I definitely want to be more like Lana and Lena, just without the horrific backstory. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, yeah, be be part of the club rather than sitting back and um, in the corner. I I mean, I'd like to say I'm sweet. I'd like somebody to believe that about me. <laughs> but um you can't you cannot read my books and go oh she really is a nice <laughs> like, it's like no yeah <laughs> i just had a reader ask me the other day like you know why do I, why i think i'm so good at writing dark and i'm like i've never actually classed my books as dark is it dark do i write dark i'm like that was just normal for me <laughs> like, reality check yes i know <laughs> I I once said to my um I I told my editor I'm I'm going to write a a really humorous book. I want to write something fun and light and yeah. she's like, "Yeah, okay, Christine, whatever you want to do." And then I call her up about a month later and I said, "You know, this book really turned dark." And she <laughs> goes, "What a shocker." Yeah, no one is surprised. <laughs> <laughs> um i actually did the same thing i've just written a book for the magic and mayhem world and it's meant to be comic romantic suspense and i got to the end of it and i'm like i don't know if it's funny enough because like the suspense overtook it and i'm like mm-hmm. ah, we'll put it out there we'll see what the readers think but i'm like i'm not sure it's funny enough to really be in that world but mm-hmm. we'll see um, okay, so what can you tell us about your most recent release, Desolation Road, and how did you decide who was the right heroine for Alexi? You know, okay, I'd like to say I decide. I would. I would like to say I decide who's going to be next, and I would like to say I decide their 
heroine, you know, or their hero, depending upon who it is. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I, I think I'm a little nuts. I have these voices in my head. I'm one of those crazy people. And, you know, he came forward and he's like, I'm next, write my story. And then as I'm writing his story, she just, you know, she just came forward and she's like, this is who I am. And he's like, she's mine. And that's the way it is. I mean, and, and they become perfect for each other. Mm -hmm. And I know that they belong, like they're so perfect for each other. And people will suggest to me, I get readers all the time, oh, I know this person needs this kind of, you know, like, it can dark. never work like that. It yeah. never works like that. Or they'll want this next, this has to be the next person you write. Mm -hmm. And it, it just doesn't work like that because they stack up in my head and <laughs> by yeah. how loud they are. They do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when you do think you've got them in order, like when you start a series, you're like, right, this is the order. Inevitably it goes up the creek because mm -hmm. one of them gets loud and they're like, ah, no, I'm, I'm in there. I'm not mm -hmm. waiting. But I mean, yeah. I've kind of been looking forward to absence story because of the whole lie detection thing. Mm -hmm. like, that would be really frustrating to live with. <laughs> like yes. there's no white lies. That's Very right. hard. Very hard. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. I'm not sure I envy who he ends up with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, unless you're a certain type of girl. But yeah, it's like, I mean, he's got fairly thick skin. I'm sure he can take the truth, but like to not be able to whitewash anything, um, mm -hmm. even if, you, I mean, you know, like we all say little white lies to kind of save feelings and it's like to not even be able to do that without them knowing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking you're such an ass. <laughs> Imagine when he has kids, like what kind of dad he'd be. He's like, so what are you doing? And he's like, they're going to run out and do something. <laughs> Lie. <laughs> <laughs> his poor kids are not going to get away with anything. No, no. <laughs> no, his children are in for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we'll just switch over to your another series for a minute. Okay. Because you're very prolific and you have lots of releases so um what can you tell us about the next carpath i always say this wrong carpathian well Carpath yeah. so, which a lot of people pronounce them different ways and i let everybody pronounce them the way they want to i'll blame you straight so uh dark song i believe is next um up and that comes out let me see what actual that come dark song comes out september 1st mm -hmm. and that everybody's kind of been waiting for that story. Um, let me see. Yeah. Uh, she's been that poor girl. I did a number on her. <laughs> she's been in the ground for a while, recouping and waiting. And, um, she was taken at a very, oh gosh, what she was taken when she was 16 by a vampire and um, held for, you know, a thousand years. <laughs> and I know that all the readers think, oh, she's just gonna come out and be this modern woman, which would be absolutely not real. No. <laughs> and then she has this man who I was scared. I was like, oh my God, he's like one of the, you know, He's, he's an ancient who is one of the, through the whole thing, he's been um, considered one of the scariest guys. And I was like, oh, great. You have to be her life mate. Wonderful. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I really felt like it was one of my um, greatest love stories. Okay. I, I don't know how it came out like that. But there was just something about the two of them. And then um, there's this character that runs through this series. Um, his name is Joseph. And he um, is a, he's young. Um, in the Carpathian children do not age like we do. So they're 50 before they're even considered an adult. 
-hmm. and he's in his 20s, like early 20s, like 21. So he's considered a little kid, but yeah. he's super cool with technology. And he is there and trying to help them. And, you know, he's just, he plays a big part in this story. And I like him. I've always loved his character. And he, um, I don't know, I always feel like he adds a lot to a book because just the way he is, mm -hmm. there's something about him that I particularly like, maybe because I like kids, <laughs> you know. So um, th this book, uh, there was just something about all the different characters in the book that I really liked. But I like the, two, the couple so much and I, I really felt like it really truly was quite the love story. <laughs> Excellent. I haven't actually read that series yet. <laughs> I keep meaning to get to it and then I get distracted by other new releases. I haven't got yet. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot but you know you don't, you, this is one of those stories that I, well all of the series, I tried it that each book stands alone, that it's really the story of the couple. And they do, like, I know, like, I, I started reading Torpedo Inc. Like, so, I, I mean, I love the Ghost Walkers. I can paraphrase most of them. Um, <laughs> and then I moved from that straight on to Torpedo Inc. And then I was, I think I was talking to Joe, saying, oh, I wish there was more in this world. And they're like, well, actually, <laughs> there's all these series. And it was funny, like, so I read Judgment Road and then, I went back and read the Drake sisters and Sea Haven books and then lis listened to Judgment Road again. And it was just, it was like discovering a whole second book within the book because yeah. of all of the, the characters from those, yeah. those series in it. So it makes perfect sense as a standalone. But when you add in all that other stuff, it's just like this secret world within the book, which I think is awesome. Um, and so speaking of, speaking of Ghost Walkers again, of all of, you've said how much fun you've had researching all the science and stuff of it, of, of all of the talents that the different ghost walkers have, which talent would you like to have? Hmm. I've always wanted to be able to sort of fade into the background, but... <clears throat> okay, I guess I'm bloodthirsty. <laughs> Not the psychic healing then? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think I would go for that. Um, I don't think that would be me. Um, no. But I, I do like all the, you know, the animal traits that they have that they often don't like to have, you know. I really liked, um, you know, the heroine in uh, Toxic Game. Uh, maybe you didn't read that one. I read it, but I mix up who's in what book. Uh, her name was Shyla, and she, uh, you know, she was the she was so cool because she was cool under fire all the time, yeah. and she, uh, I don't know, man, she just was so sweet and so nice, and she was like the perfect little assassin. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I think I just like her. I wouldn't mind being her. Yeah, I, I love that the girls like, that Whitney wanted to be the perfect assassin, but it turned out they had a conscience. Huh? <laughs> it's just like, sucks to be you, Whitney, because they ain't doing it. <laughs> yeah. But then there was a the little one that had the, you know, she could go in the water and, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah, the blue ring octopus one. Uh -huh. yeah. She yeah. was awesome. Yeah. So. yeah. I get the names mixed up, but I, I have read them all. <laughs> just, yeah. Just, they get me no. mixed up. <laughs> My other ghost walker question is, can you please confirm that Gator and Wyatt's grandmother is actually immortal and will never die? Because I don't think my heart can take Nonny dying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't plan on killing her off, which is why the books are like so close together. <laughs> I'm like, you can't die. You can't die. I love her too. There was so one, one of the last books of, I don't think it was Wyatt's, it was some... Um, I can't remember which one it was, but you kept revisiting scenes with Nonny and you were making me nervous because I'm like, she keeps saying, like the characters keep saying how great she is and how wonderful she is and how much she'd be missed. And I'm like, she better not be leading up to what I think she's leading up to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want her to die either. So 
(laughs) She's so awesome. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they need her. I think all those, you know, cause those girls have never had anybody and she's kind of the one that holds, she's the glue that holds everybody together. I mean, most of the guys haven't either. Like they're Mm -hmm. all grown up without kind of that. I think the whole theme of all of the books is for me, family, you know, I mean, the, all of my books are that way. The Carpathians are that way. The, the ghost walkers are that even the, even the leopard series is that way. You know, they all need family. Yeah. I love how you write the big families. Like, yeah, they don't, I mean, sometimes they're blood related, like the um, Italians, but um you have too many series. I can't keep them straight. Um, it's like I've read them. I, do. Like, I definitely have a lot of series. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Giovanni and, and that, that crew there are blood related, but other than that, the others aren't blood related. They're just, but they have still got that family bond. And, and I, don't, I think that's what keeps me coming back and rereading them because it's that bond. Mm-hmm. I mean, the romance is great. The Happily Ever After is awesome, but it's the bond between the characters, not just the hero and heroine. It's, all of them that mm-hmm. kind of keeps me coming back anyway because I love that hopefully I manage to put it in my books I try <laughs> I think you do a good job now I've got a couple of reader questions to finish okay. off questions with um so the first one is from Malvina York um she says hello Christine I've always thought your dark series was a game changer for paranormal romance thanks you always write with that dark gothic edge how do you keep the intensity going? I would be exhausted after one day of writing. <laughs> I love writing. First of all, I love books. I love the written word. <clears throat> I, I love everything about books. It, uh, to me, it, it replaces, you know, it's better than movies. It's better than television. Uh, I can open a book and it's like going on this grand adventure. And when I write, it's the same thing. I, I don't plot out a book ahead of time because then I've already been there. Mm. So when I start writing, it's like going on this amazing adventure. And sometimes I get so caught up in it that um, I find myself, it's, Oh God, it's three 30 in the morning or four o'clock in the morning. I better shut this computer down and go to sleep because I have to get up at eight and start all over again. Uh, Yeah. And for me, for a lot of years, um, it, it was, you know, I didn't publish for a lot of years. I actually was a martial arts instructor and that was my career. It wasn't writing. So writing was my escape from the craziness of my life, which was a million children. (laughs) And so, um, that's where I went in my head. And, Mm -hmm. and it, you know, it's just like when you pick up a book and you disappear, well, it was the same thing. I would, I would write. And so, yeah, I would look forward to that. Oh my God, I get, I get to go away in my head. So. Yeah, I, there are days where I kind of sit back and I'm like, I don't actually do much because like I live in the world, like everything that I kind of want to experience, I do fictionally. Mm-hmm. I was like, eh, I haven't actually left the house in a while. Like even before the restrictions and lockdown happened, it's just like, eh, don't actually leave the house all that often. <laughs> but I do all yeah. this stuff in fiction. You, you, you do ha- end up having to be careful about that in some mm-hmm. ways because I can, um, I, I live in my head a lot of the time so much that if I, okay, this is, oh my God, I shouldn't even say this on, but if I'm bored with a conversation, I let the head, the voices in my, you know, where I'm going in my story take over and I'm listening there. Well, I kind of hear what's going on over here, but mostly I'm listening here and that's very bad. I mean, I really should be paying attention, but nowadays the kids are much older, so I really don't have to pay that much attention. (laughs) When I do that, I clearly, my eyes must glaze over or something because like Steve works it out and he just glares at me. He's like, whoops, sorry. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. You, get, you can get caught. You can. The characters are loud. They're like, they're hard to shut up. <laughs> you have to listen. They're, they're not. You and they love talking. On me. Just as you lie down to go to bed, just as you lie down on the bed and you get comfortable and you're just getting warm, then they're like, oh, this is how we can fix that plot hole. And you're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> not comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got one more read question from Rosemary Race. Do you remember your first pitch and why you chose the genre of that pitch? Oh my God. You know, she's going to kill me. She's a writer. That's who she is. She's a writer. I've never pitched a story in my life. <laughs> never. I, um, I sent in a dark, Prince because my girlfriend said okay what happened was um, uh, we needed the money my husband uh, retired when he he just we we needed the money yeah. and I uh, was like I don't know what we're gonna do he wouldn't he wasn't working and we had I had these children and my girlfriend said, send in your, your book. And I, I was like, can I take my book? Nobody's taking, I mean, this is paranormal. There's vampires in it. Nobody's doing pam, vampires. And they weren't at that time. You couldn't say the word vampire in romance. I mean, it just wasn't done. And no, 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 send it in. It's, it's great, send it in. And I did. And literally there wasn't an editor who would read it until the one at yeah, alicia at dorchester mm -hmm. and i get this call from her and she said this is alicia and we want to buy the book <laughs> and i hung up <laughs> i did i hung up on her because a i never in a million years thought they would buy the book and you know it's that was the last thing I I had done so much I don't know I'm sure every woman in the world can understand it but I had taken care of so many kids and done so much work and that was the last piece of me and I didn't want to give it up yeah and I I just truly didn't think that anybody would buy it. And also that particular book I had written, <clears throat> my oldest son had, uh, had died in an, in an accident. This was years ago. And um, that was what kind of saved me. I wrote that book um, to, to keep going to make myself keep going. I had children that I had to, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, I had, I had to get up every day and I had to take care of them and I had to, you know, work and, and I, and I, I was numb. I couldn't feel anything. I, I, and so I turned to writing. I disappeared into a world that I used to tell him stories all the time. And, so that was sort of where I went in order to survive. And so giving that to somebody was, uh, it, one, it was terrifying. And, and two, it was like, dude, I really want to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. But we needed the money. I mean, I had these small children that I, I had to support. So she called back. I, I think we were disconnected somehow. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and the money that she offered was very little, like, you know, like minuscule. And I thought, oh, I would have to write three books a year in order to make enough money to support these kids doing this. Mm -hmm. and could I do it, you know? So I thought about it and I thought, oh, I probably could, you know. So uh, I said yes, and I sent her uh, the 
I do, you know, that I had these two other books that I had worked on. I mean, you know, I, I had written them, but they weren't polished and you know how you write them for yourself and you just throw them under the bed. And that's the kind of thing I do. I just had written books and I threw them under the bed. Mm -hmm. And, um, so she wanted to see them and I, well, I'll fix them up. So I polished the second one and the third one and I sent them to her and she calls me back and she says, well, you know, the second one, you're going to have to change the first chapter. And I said, no, just throw it away. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, what? You want me to throw your book away? I said, toss it. I said, have you read the third one? Yes, we read the third one. We love the third one. We're, we want the third one. But let's go back to the second one. I said, no, it doesn't work changing the first chapter. I tried 40 different ways and it doesn't work. So yeah. toss it. If you don't like it, we're not changing it. Just toss it. Yeah. All right. We'll just take it as it is. <laughs> Now you know how to do with it from there on out. If you want to keep something, just tell them to toss it. <laughs> oh my God. I did everything possible that you could do wrong. I did. Because I didn't know any better. I'd never heard of RWA in my life. Ever. I didn't, I wasn't a part of RWA. I didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. I had no idea about anything. So I did everything wrong. <laughs> it was bad. It was meant to be. I was just bad. I was just bad. Yeah, I was pretty naive. All I all I wanted to do was make sure my kids had something to eat. I think we're all I think we're all naive in the beginning. Like mm -hmm. I often say that nothing is as easy to write as your first book. Because mm -hmm. the more you write, the more rules you learn and the more stuff you learn. and it's like you get to the point where you kind of sit there and look at a story and you're like I don't even know how to start because like you can't use repeat words. You can't like all these little glitchy things that when you write your first book, you just don't know about them. <laughs> it's like nothing is as easy to write as that first book. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. It's just crazy. Yeah. Well, that's all my questions. So unless you have something else you would like to share with everybody. Well, I have a question for you. <laughs> What made you decide to write motorcycle books? Well, so I started writing about nine years ago and I, I love paranormal. So I wrote paranormal and after five years of writing paranormal and still not making enough for it to kind of do anything, my editor and another author friend basically sat me down and went, your skills are being wasted on a genre no one is reading at the moment. Like you just, you're going to kill yourself doing this. You need to pick a genre that's selling. So I'm like, yeah, okay, I need to get rid of my paranormal. I need to accept that I have to stop writing shifters for a little while. And so I, I just kind of went to Amazon and was looking at the bestseller lists and I can't remember the book now, but it was just, yeah, an MC romance came up and I'm like, well, I mean, I don't ride, I don't personally ride a bike, but my husband rides a bike and, um, I mean, we've got two kids, so I don't get to go on the back often, but like when we were dating, I was always on the back within weeks of, of starting dating. I had my own helmet and pants and, and leather jacket and they still fit <laughs> 12 years later. I still wear the same. It's a little tight. It's a little corset like, but, um, I could still fit in my jacket. So because I already had that love for bikes, I kind of went, well, I think I can, I can actually enjoy writing MC romance. And the more I looked into it, the more I realized biker men are really alpha male. Like they're so similar to a shifter really, except for the fact they don't change forms, but the mindset and the mentality and the way that they're protective of those they care about is very similar to an alpha male paranormal. So, um, and yeah, I mean, originally the Sharon MC was meant to be a trilogy. And yeah, like I said, I've just finished <laughs> polishing up book 12. Um, because yeah, my muse just fell in love with that. And yeah, I've just, yeah, I completely fell in love with the MC genre and haven't looked back. <laughs> yeah, I love them too. I do. And I, and I look for good ones, you know, yeah. good ones to read. And yours were recommended to me. That's how I, I first 
heard of you was somebody recommended you and I was like oh somebody somebody good in the genre which blew me away I'm still yeah. kind of fangirling over here over that <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Auntie Reno when I was like Chris wants to meet you I'm like what Re me just little me <laughs> you know the thing is it's so funny when people say that because honestly every writer is a reader first yeah yeah but you just don't start writing until you've been a reader like right i mean so all of us are, are readers and i'm sure that there are some writers out there who get to a certain elevated status and then they think oh i'm so great i've not met them but i'm sure they're there i always feel like i'm always looking for new books to read and i and i look everywhere i look I can't tell you how many independents I go and look and I, and I try to read as many as I can because I'm, I'm always looking for new writers. Yeah. I never think, Oh, I'm so good because I've been on these bestseller lists or because I've been writing for 20 years. Yeah. I think we're all writers. We all love the written word. Yeah. I can't write enough books to satisfy a million people. I'm never going to do that. And everybody likes different types of, of stories. So I think we all need to support each other. Mm. That's to me, that's the right thing to do. And I never, I never think my writing is going to be better than somebody else's. Somebody might prefer mine to somebody else's just simply because that's their taste. Yeah. But it doesn't make my writing better. It simply means that somebody, ha that's their taste, you know? That's it. Like there's something out there for everybody. No matter what your taste is, there is an author out there writing. That's it. Exactly. It's just fun and, you know, and I love talking books. I love talking writing. And so if I'm sitting and there's a bunch of other writers there, I'm going to have a great time talking to them. It mm. doesn't matter where they even if they you know if they're not published i wasn't published for years and i was happy talking writing i have lots of friends who are not published and mm -hmm. we sit and talk about it all the time yeah you know so i love how friendly ever, the writer world is or book world is really it's it's writers and and readers like it's it's i'm really suffering having none of my events happen this year mm -hmm. uh, because yeah like it just for me, it's just a massive recharge of the battery to be able to go to these events and just immerse yeah. yourself for a few days with all the readers and writers. And because, like, it is kind of lonely being an author. I mean, you'd feel it. It if, is. Well, so. you're very isolated. And actually, when you get to a certain status, you, you're isolated too because people are afraid to approach you or talk to you. <laughs> yeah. You might and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, God, it's her. And I'm actually, as you know, I'm actually quite shy. It's yeah. very hard for me to, <laughs> to talk, except when we're like this. And I know you so well. So, you know, I, I, you just I need to pull your daughters in because they're not shy. <laughs> they are not shy at all. And that's my fault. I did not want them to be like me. And oh my God, I went overboard. They're awesome. I love the whole great. thing. <laughs> yeah, they are. they're great. And my son is too. He's yes. awesome. Yes, they're yeah. awesome. <laughs> Excellent. So I guess uh, we the should... treasure hunt. The treasure hunt. Yes, we're supposed to do the treasure hunt. Yes, we need to hide. We need to show our little codes. So everybody, pause yes. the screen. Yes, and write down four that seconds. Okay. Is that right? Yep. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. All right. So if you didn't catch it, rewind it back and hit pause and write down the number. Yes. And, and I'm so glad you ha you had me on. Yeah, and thank you for um, us. is Sharon coming back so I can say goodbye to her? I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> know. Because <laughs> she's I there. She is. is. She there normally she is. is. Normally, I pop back in after the interview, but oh. um, well, thank, thank, you you much so much. <laughs> thank you both so much for today. I really enjoyed being able to sit back and watch that.
Uh, to all our readers out there, I know you will have enjoyed this session uh, and please make sure you pick up as many of Christine's books as you can. I'm a huge fan. Obviously, Chloe is too. And uh, you're in for a treat. There are plenty of series to choose from. Oh, thank you so much, Sharon. I, I had such a good time with everybody. So, thank you, ladies, so thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.